folks, Luke with Belding Hill Farms. Thanks for watching today. Um, we had a few uh, people asking about our kefir and how we make it. Um, so we maintain um, some kefir here that Jill and I eat most every day. Uh, and then we keep the grains and the kefir um, ongoing and active because we use it when we make cheese. And we don't make cheese every day, but we use it. Now, kefir as a starter culture for your cheese only works when you're using raw milk, which we are. So this is our kefir. And if anyone purchases kefir, they would know this might not look uh, exactly as what you get in the store. But this is just kind of what happens to it after two or three days. It kind of all mats up. And before we process it, we just kind of give it a shake and kind of reintroduce everything all together. Now you can kind of see it's still got lots of little grainy pieces and stuff in there. So <clears throat> what we do, if I can get my superhero strength here and get the cover off, and there's a little bit of what it looks like in there. You want this? Can you see there? Good enough, Joe. Uh, so yeah, okay. So yeah. all all we do is we just take a regular sieve uh, and then we pour this down through the sieve. Okay. There's what the jar looks like, because we end up reusing the same jar for probably a week and a half or two weeks. The other thing about these kefir grains is that we've waited about, uh, maybe about three days to do these, because that's just how Joe and I like our kefir. But if you like the kefir more mild, then you can also do it daily. And the other thing that's neat about the kefir is you can kind of line it up with your usage. So if you're using a half a cup a day, you can kind of produce half a cup a day it really it totally depends on you because you match the amount of milk that you put in with the amount of grains that you put in so i don't know if you can see this yet but so now this is getting out there and these little these are the the, the grains themselves right there okay so we're getting down there now this is a bit of a messy procedure no doubt about it and all I'm doing is just, I just kind of keep shaking it until there's nothing more kind of coming off the grains. And you're going to see these grains really take that defined look. Okay. Now, we share these grains on a regular basis with our customers and we give them to them free. All we ask is uh, we get a bottle back. Um, and we have just split this off for one of our customers. And I'd say it's probably doubled maybe in a week and a half. Two weeks that's pretty quick but we get also um we get a little higher um growth rate i think because we're using raw milk but that doesn't mean you can't use regular store-bought milk because it works on that as well and really if i was going to split this today we could because the amount that i have left here i put about half in a jar and half here we could start into another jar okay for the for our purposes we don't need to um, so I'm going to just put it all back into that jar. And what I was saying earlier about that you match your... I'm going to make a little mess on the table. Joe will curse me, but... You match the amount of grains you put in with the amount of milk. So say you ended up with double that amount of grains, you could just put it in a bigger jar. Like if you were using more kefir on a regular basis. All right, so now... Sorry, I'm making my fingers as I do this. Reveal here. So there's our milk for this morning. No, that's right. So this is our milk here, straight from the cow this morning. Still warm. And that actually helps with the kefir. Because this is going to really blow some minds here. But we set this kefir jar on our counter. And that sounds completely counterintuitive. <laughs> pun intended um, that you would put a milk product on your counter but that's what it needs because essentially what you're doing is growing oh sorry so essentially <laughs> what you're doing is growing a uh, like a bacterial culture in there okay so then I just make sure I mix that all the grains all in together good and then that goes on our counter and as we walk by it maybe two or three times a day we'll give it a shake and uh, and then we'll We'll uh, do this again in two or three days. 
And like I said, if you're if you prefer to have um, a less strong tasting kefir, you just have to do it every day. If you like it a little more tart, then you do it. Um, then you do it like uh, maybe five days. And a lot of people get stressed about this that uh, you know they're worried they're going to kill it or ruin it or whatever. It's pretty hard to ruin. And the other neat feature that that we do with with our kefir. So all I did was reincorporate some of that in there. And there's the that's the kefir that we actually eat. At the end of the video, I'll leave uh, some information on this slide and a couple others. Um, plus a picture of how Jill and I eat it, and we'll talk a little bit uh, there about, uh, you know, some recipes and ways that we use it. Or use for cheese making. And that's it. So the longer you set it, the longer you set it, the thicker it can get. Um, the warmer you keep it, the thicker and quicker it will get. It's kind of like it, you just have to kind of play with it to get it right. Um, so... The other thing that's neat about that, where I showed you the fact that the grains double, is if you um, are scared that you might hurt the one that's on your counter at some point, you can always take and um, split it off and put some in milk and put it in your fridge. And that basically, when it goes in the fridge, it kind of puts it into stasis. It just kind of sits there, it doesn't do anything. So it will keep in your fridge for about six months. Six months later, you have to go back and, and then give it some new milk kind of thing. Um, but the neat part about that is you never have to worry about ruining your grains. If you do something catastrophic to them and you ruin them, you just take the one out that you saved in the fridge and you carry on. And again, it's something you can share. Like we could share a bottle of this every, probably every week we could share a bottle. Um, Tons of health benefits. I'm not even going to begin to go into the health benefits of kefir, but there's lots of them. And I know Jill and I certainly find it really helps digestively with us. Um, and, and it's neat when you can take a product that you can produce yourself every day. And, and it's expensive. We just had one of our customers that we gave some grains to that said that she's been using the grains for a year, or the kefir, sorry, for years and years and years. Uh, and we just gave her some grains. So now she takes care of her own supply. And, uh, and it only costs her the price of the milk that she adds to it. So uh, yeah, there's all kinds of little nuances. If you have any questions or whatever, you can hit them in the comments or you can always shoot our Facebook page a message. We're happy to answer them. Um, and uh, if anyone that lives local to us would like some grains, it's just a matter of reaching out to us and we'll, we'll hook you up with some free grains. So uh, thank you very much for watching and uh, hope you have a great day. So as promised, I said I'd share some of our recipes, but our recipes are pretty simple. Like as you can see in this photo, we just took some raspberries and um, I'm, I forget, I think maybe they were figs or something. I forget what you had and some sliced almonds and a little bit of granola. And we mix kefir and yogurt and we mix that all together. And that's what we call breakfast. We have that probably four days a week. Um, the other thing that I said I was going to show you was some of the health benefits and they're numerous here and you can pause it and check out these slides and if you do a little bit of research on the internet you're going to see that uh, kefir is tre tremendous um, health benefits so uh, it doesn't take up much research and if anyone has any questions please feel free to reach out to us.